Inferno Warriors. It's your boy, Lionheart, and, um, <laughs> feels good, man. Always feels good. Merry Christmas. Boxing Day. I hope you guys are happy. I hope every, every single one of you is safe. We've made it through the year. I'm praying every single one of you guys and all your family and friends have made it through to the end of the year and will keep on going forward, man. So, yeah. Um, another thing I want to say, sorry about my Merry Christmas, um, Christmas Day stream. It cut out abruptly. I have no idea what that was, right? The YouTube just cut out. It froze, couldn't get back on. I don't know what was going on. You know, I had to actually uninstall um, YouTube and everything like that and put it back on and see how it goes. I'm going to try to do um, more and see how that goes. But yeah, sorry about that. Um, the Christmas stream just cutting out abruptly, right? I really loved that stream. It was so cool getting to talk with everybody and just seeing how you guys are doing through Christmas and yeah it was a nice little chill stream man we might do more definitely might do more of that so yeah today I want to do top 10 games of 2020 yeah so without any further ado let's get started number 10 cyberpunk 2077 now that game is an utter disappointment right because of how glitchy it is how unstable it is the lies and deception which pisses me off the most yeah and the graphics being average to below average yeah but the thing is yeah there are certain points of that game where it looks amazing. And I'm not going to make excuses for that game. But there are times where you can actually see the absolute brilliance in that game. But I can't give the game a pass. Yeah. Because that's like saying... Well, I could have been a billionaire. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Yeah? So, Cyberpunk 2077. When the game works, that game is incredible. When you're driving in your car and you've got the music going and you're driving through the city and then you see something going on and then you're just driving and then you see it and then you stop the car, reverse, take a look, hmm, get out of the car, check what's going on, and then you see it's maybe Militech, right? Have just ambushed a convoy from Arasaka, and they've just taken some experimental um, device off a convoy from Arasaka. And they're going to blame it on maybe the Maelstrom gang. And then you think to yourself, I think to myself, hmm, experimental uh, weapon. Militech has taken it. They're going to say that, they're going to frame, um, what they call it again? Uh, Maelstrom. Nobody's thinking about me. Hmm. Take my weapon, check my ammo, abilities are good, let's get it. And then I would just like wipe out the whole of Militech, take it, I'm unseen, and you could go into that battle without even going into battle. You can just like hack somebody, yeah, and then make them go um, crazy, yeah, have a case of cyber psychosis where they kill off their, their own squad. And then you just snipe them off from afar. And then one, one person there is left. 
yeah, if that person's been a little bit difficult, make them commit suicide by hacking them. And then you just come in and take all the spoils and then you just leave without being seen. Nobody knows about you. You've got that experimental piece of technology. And then you go off. It's all about Militech, Arasaka and the Maelstrom. Nothing to do with you. Get in your car, put on the radio, drive off. Just saying, you know what I mean? But in between that, you've got bad graphics. The, the CPU, the, the NPCs are weird. Yeah, like the the combat is so inconsistent. Like the, the, the gunfights, they're not great. Yeah, let's be honest with you. Some of the weapons are really fun. Yeah, once you start getting into them and starting to understand a lot about the how the weapons work and different styles of the weapons, right? But it's not it's not it's not groundbreaking, but it's fun. And the biggest problem that was a hiccup there. Right, but as I say, the biggest problem is the fact that the game is inconsistent and it's glitchy and the graphics are not super great. But I can see what the game is. And when it works, the game is so good, man, that I had to put it in, in number, I had to put it as number 10, right? It could potentially have been one of the best games I've ever played, but now we'll probably never know that and it will never reach that status just because, you know, stuff. All right, number nine, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. God, I love my fighting games. You know, I like my Street Fighter, Guilty Gear, Tekken, Dragon Ball Fighters, Grand Blue Versus. I love the anime, man. The anime for that um, that mobile game is godlike. It's like they have Grand Blue has its own universe. Right, and to have Arc System work, so people that did Guilty Gear make their fighting game master. It's a master move, right? So yeah, that game, godlike fighting game. I have to put it in my um, my top ten. And there it is, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. All right, next Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE. Love that game. That game is literally like. A, it's like a Shin Megami Tensei game and a what's that game called again it's like Three Houses I can't remember what it's called but it's, it's basically like Three Houses yeah on the Switch yeah it's like one of those type of games godlike RPG incredible incredible addictive and fun system yeah yeah that game i have to put that game as my number eight uh yeah 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 really good fun amazing character designs really good story um amazing world and activities to do more about the characters than it is about the world because it's a very linear game but there's a lot of activities to do and the combat is so much fun the music is amazing the animations are unreal and it's just more the characters are just so so awesome man right so yeah definitely tokyo mirage sessions fe that had to be my number eight number seven i really didn't want to put this game in my top 10 at all because i don't want to give it i don't want to give it glory yeah but i can't deny the game is good can't deny it Genshin Impact. That game is amazing. The game's amazing. I'm reluctant to say it, but I call a spade a spade. That game is fun. Combat, watching your characters, building your characters, creating builds to see what type of, how, how much damage you can do with your characters. And the game has got the maths down to an absolute precise science. Where if you have built your character right, you will see the numbers increase. And it's consistent. And I love that. The characters are amazing. 
The game makes you love the characters. They'll have like certain story missions or quests or certain events that centers around a certain character. And the characters are so well done that you fall in love with the characters. That is how well the characters are done. The biggest problem is to get those characters, you have to wish those for those characters. And the way you wish for those characters is you have to get these things called Primo Gems, which allows you to make wishes. You can get a lot of Primo Gems in the game, but it's not nearly enough that is required to make enough wishes to get a character. A new event comes out. In that whole event, you're probably going to get about, say, 1,600, 1,800 um, Primal Gems, which is enough to get you 10, 12, maybe 13 wishes, if even that. Yet you need 90 wishes to guarantee getting the featured character that the whole event is based on, that you fall in love with. I'm not going to go too deep into it. So yeah, Genshin Impact, really, really good game, unbelievably fun, addictive. The game is crack, man. It's crack. That's the kind of game where you can just play it for hours and not realise it. Well, you can't. You can play it for hours, but you're not actually doing anything other than fighting and enjoying going about the world and just listening to the music because the world back music is awesome. The list watching your characters do their thing, their idol poses, listen to what they say during combat. It's awesome, and you just love the characters and the music and the world and just the the feeling that you are an adventurer in that world of. Monster or Leeway or wherever you are, yeah. So yeah, Genshin Impact number seven, number six, Resident Evil Three. Now Resident Evil Three, that game I actually really love that game. Jill Valentine is one of my most favorite characters, if not my most favorite character in the whole of the Resident Evil franchise. Although I'm not a massive fight fan of what they did to Jill's. The aesthetics of Jill, it's still Jill, right? And I love her. So the fact that I get a game with Jill Valentine that complements Resident Evil 2, I'm happy. The only problem I have with Resident Evil 3 is they missed out a section, a whole massive section of the game that they needed to put in that game. And the, whole, the only reason why that section for me is important is because that's where all the puzzles were, right? And a lot of events happened in that area. Although they do put some new areas and they do put the cutscenes that were in that area in different areas. The puzzles, the adventure, that's what they missed out. It's the essence of it. Sorry, <laughs> smoke too long without breathing. Yeah, and that's the whole problem with that. The only problem I have with that game is that fact that they missed out a giant section of the game with all the puzzles. You need that in Resident Evil 3, man. It's part of the nature, it's part of the fabric of the game. But still, the game is hella fun. I love it. The graphics were good, the music, the tension, the, the game is just godlike, man. I love that game. I'm so happy I, I can put that in my collection now with Resident Evil 2. I'm done. Resident Evil 3, my number six game of 2020. All right. Number five. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now... Xenoblade Chronicles, the first game, is one of the best games I've ever played in my life. That game is amazing. The characters, the, the character, the music, the world, the adventure. There's not many games that you play and you just feel so immersed in that world. 
And that game and the story is just one of those rare games where it is like a complete experience, right? And any game that makes me feel like that is peak. That's the one of the reasons I had to put Cyberpunk 2077 as my ten in, in my top ten for this year of games is because when I'm playing that cyberpunk I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm in that world of Night City. And the only time I don't feel like I'm in it, which is constantly, is when something immersion breaking happens, which is most of the time. But when that doesn't happen, I feel like I'm in cyberpunk. The same thing with Xenoblade Chronicles. That game and the characters and the combat and just you feel like you're learning all the time. And they added more story. They added an ending after the ending. Bro, they took it too far, man. They really took it too far. Because in, in uh, Set Up Build Chronicles 2, they evolved the game so much. And they brought the original best game into the graphics of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I mean, bro, I'm not going to pick between which one is better, but Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition means everything to me. It's, it's one of the most, the best games ever. Ever. All right. So, that was my number five. Number four. Persona 5 Royale. Wow. Wow, bro. They took it far. From Persona 5 to Persona 5 Royale, the difference between those two games is like the space within the Grand Canyon. I am so happy I didn't watch a review or I didn't watch any videos or anything to do with uh, Persona 5 Royale. Because there were some revelations in that game that just absolutely blew my mind. And if I had known about them before, it would have ruined the experience for me. That game shocked me. Because I thought they're going to add a new semester or something towards the ending. They went further than that, man. I mean, they did add a semester, but it's so understated what they added to it. The characters, man. You just, every single character, that whole game is important. Every single character you love. The, uh, the activities of the way you build your re re relationships with the characters, your social links, everything means something in that game. Bro, Persona 5 Royale, man. That game, in another year, that could have been my number one game. I, I really would like to put that game as my number one game of 2020, but I can't. Not with the next three games that I'm going to say. But this game, man, is just... It is just unreal. Such a joy. One of the first games where I can actually say I like the main character. Like, the main character is godlike. Like, if you to ask me... If you someone to ask me, what is, who is my favourite character? Who is my most enjoyed character? the main character it's joker free free because the main character is so awesome awesome character bro sona 5 royale my fourth best game of 2020 number three devil may cry 5 special edition bro as you know, I did my video, my reaction, 
We got like 17,000 views, man. By the end of this year, it might be 18,000 views on that video. Virgil. I really wanted me some Virgil in the original game. So when I saw, I heard Virgil, it was... I did. I didn't want it to. I didn't want them to get my hopes up. Cause I didn't want to be disappointed. Don't ever tease me with Virgil, bro, and then not make good on it. They made good on it, and more. Devil May Cry game, man. Devil May Cry is a special game to me. That game saved my life, right? Devil May Cry. It means more to me than any other game. Like, just Dante, the character, because of what it did for me in my life, which is a whole story, yeah? But if you know, I always got my man Dante in the back. Devil May Cry is a game that is, it's sacred to me. As I said, the game saved my life. That's all I'll say. I love Devil May Cry. I love Dante. So the fact that they gave me a special edition in 2020. Beautiful. Beautiful game. You do not need me to tell you about Devil May Cry. The absolute magnificence of that game. Alright, so that was my number three. Devil May Cry 3. Yeah. Alright, so... Number two, this is another game, could easily, on another year, if it didn't have this contender, that's at number one, this game, that is my number two, could easily be my number one. There's only one game in the whole world that could beat this game in terms of being my number one. Just the only game that could have beat it. Number two. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, that game, dude, that game, you know, there's times where they make a game that you can feel absolute love, and that is in Marvel, Spider-Man's Miles Morales, they care so much much about the game that they are making bro they cared so much man and you can feel it bro it's nothing but love i've only felt this in three games yeah devil may cry and spider-man miles morales those are the games where i could feel that the devs felt pure love. Oh yeah, and Spider-Man. The original Spider-Man on the PS4. Yeah, with Peter Parker. Where I could just feel an overwhelming sense of pride and love for their work. I felt that with this game, Marvel, um, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Bro. The character of Miles, his adventure, the cutscenes, his relationship with his mum, Genki, just everything, man. Just his costumes, the way he learns, his fighting style, the way he swings through the city, his characteristics, the music. It's just, it's just beautiful. If I, the only word I can use to describe that game is beautiful. It's an absolute work of art, man. Like, there's times when I play that game and I just have to stop because I'm just so... I'm overwhelmed with the... the beauty of the game. Of what I'm playing. Of the character, of the music. Because it's, it's Spider-Man, but it's new Spider-Man. It's a different Spider-Man that I like. I love. Man, it's crazy, man. Crazy. But yes. Spider-Man. Miles Morales. My number two. Number one. 
Final Fantasy VII Remake. The only game that could top Marvel Morales Persona Devil May Cry Son of Bear Chronicles The only game Final Fantasy 7 Remake Put my top 5 in order Because I already had the number 1 spot It was taken Before I did 10 Through to 6 Number one was already picked. It was done. It was a done deal. And that allowed me to shape two through to five. Final Fantasy VII Remake. The absolute best game ever, 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 ever. Final Fantasy VII Remake is my life. I was raised on that game. I love that game. Those characters. Barrett, Tifa, Aerith, Cloud, Zack, Nanaki, Red 13. Bro, I didn't want to say it. I was just about to say it. I was just about to say it. I'll say it anyway. Vincent Valentine. Yuffie, Sid, bro, bro, don't do it, don't do it man, don't do it, don't give me those characters, don't give me those characters in the next game, it's too much man, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much, that game is perfection, it's perfection, I couldn't have asked for better. The fact that they gave Midgar a complete game. I'm so happy. They didn't try to like shorten it. They expanded it. And now we have left Midgar. And they're going to change everything. It's just... I cannot even comprehend my own thoughts. So I have to stop thinking about it. What they could do is they could change the world with this. They're rewriting history with what they're doing right now. They're rewriting history, literally. And they've done that in the game. What they did in the game was so smart, man. It's so awesome and cool and playing with fire because you play with a lot of people's memories, man. And a lot of people's uh, passions and dreams and childhood memories, bro, in Final Fantasy VII. And they pulled it off masterfully. The music, the characters, the combat, the interaction. To watch Cloud talking to... Um, Tifa to watch Aerith with um, Barrett to watch Barrett talking with Tifa to see Seventh Heaven to be in the in uh, Sector Seven, the slums, going to the Shinra headquarters, seeing the Turks, Reno, Rude, Tseng, bro. That game is just absolute wonder. Best game of 2020. Best game of my life ever in gaming. Ever. So yeah, that was my top 20. And guys, I want to hear what you guys... Sorry, my top 10. Sorry. My top 10 best games of 2020. Yeah. I would like to know what you guys top 10 video games of 2020 are. If you just write the list in the comment section, I'll read it, go through it, and I'll comment back. I will have I will talk about it. And let me know what you think about my top 10. Alright, Warriors. 
until my next video take care stay blessed thank you merry christmas